Hello, so it is April 5th and uh, I finished tracking acoustic guitars and moving on to electric guitars. So I've taken the past couple of weeks uh, to try to get a setup um, that I like. Been messing with some different microphone configurations and placements and uh, going back and forth between amps, how to get a good amp sound that I am liking. Uh, and this is what I have come up with. So uh, this is gonna be pretty much the standard uh, basic tracking for electric guitars going through most of the songs. Um, so I have gone stereo, a stereo rig. Uh, my floorboard has a pedal that comes out has stereo outputs and we go left and right left side goes to my pv classic 50 amp and i am miking that 10 inch speaker with an sm57 and then on the right side if we can see here we come out and we're going to a victory amplification the jack amp and a four by 12 inch speaker this cabinet um, 12 inch speaker is mic'd up using a sennheiser e609 so a sure sm57 on a 10 inch speaker sennheiser e609 on a 12 inch speaker and those are left and right and then the trick that i have come up with um, it's not a trick I came up with. What I have found that I really liked, a little secret, is I have a third microphone back there. This is an open back combo amp. So I've mic'd the back of that amplifier with a small diaphragm condenser mic, and I mix that in to be in the center. So we actually have Three microphones picking up the same signal, if you will, basically the same track as I record. One part, it gets triplicated left, right, and then center is in the back of the amp. Cool. All right. So on with it. I think that's it. All right. So the current song, I figured I'd just give a view into my gain staging. All guitarists love their gain. So this is what I'm currently using on the current song. Uh, we're going with a Zeus, TC Electronic Zeus drive. Going into, let me actually activate that. Going into a DNM drive, but I'm actually only using the boost side of the Keeley DNM drive. So there you go. One song, gain stage. It is the month of May now, still recording guitars. Uh, it's going good, slow, but surely making some progress. I uh, figured I'd just show you the latest configuration of gain staging that I've got going on. Let's take a look. Okay, so this is the Boss DS1 Classic Distortion Pedal. I have swapped it out for the Zeus overdrive that was in this spot. And I am currently using it just by itself. Uh, sometimes I do throw on the DNM boost side of the DNM drive with it. Uh, but for the part that I happen to be doing at the moment, just the DS1 distortion pedal. However, if you can see by the way the knobs are set, I'm not really using it as a full blown distortion uh, like it may have been intended, um, but there's a little trick that you may know about. And what you do is you turn up the level knob a pretty good bit, and you turn down the distortion knob almost all the way down. So it actually acts more like an overdrive than a true distortion pedal. So a lot of level, it really slams the front end of your amp. Not much clipping with the distortion. And then you just add in your tone to taste. I find that uh, actually right in the middle 
is pretty good for me. Sounds nice. Cool, so there you got the latest iteration of gain staging for guitars. Okay, so a little recording guitar tip, uh, trick. Hopefully most people know about this if you're into it, and that is muting the strings when you're recording. So you see here, uh, I've got this rag that's wrapped around most of the strings, all but one string. And that's because at the moment I'm recording a part, a little riff that's only one string. So this rag here, which I have run underneath the other strings, and then I fold it over, uh, acts to keep those other strings muted. So just in case I hit them, they actually don't ring out at all. And I get just the one string riff that I need to record. Little trick. Oh, really? Where's the button that says, no, that's not okay? Wonderful. All right, it is November uh, 18th, I think. I don't know, we're in the middle of November. We're getting close to the end though. Um, I feel like it's been about two years doing guitars. Ugh. All right, but anyway, uh, one last thing I wanted to mention, uh, another little technique about muting strings. So this is, if you're doing lead work, if you're doing like, you know, lead passages up top, up high, uh, you can tie a rag or uh, any other sort of thing to muffle the strings. As long as you don't have an open string lick that you're playing, everything is above whatever you're uh, muting here. It's kind of like a capo, except you're not actually clamping down on the strings. Uh, you're just keeping the strings from ringing. So if everything is above, say, the 12th fret, you could put it at the 12th fret and then all those extra strings you don't really have to worry about ringing out while, while you're playing your lead stuff. This is also very helpful for slide guitar, which I am not very good at, so I utilize this a lot to uh, use a slide and keep all of those extra strings from ringing out when I'm trying to play slide. Trying is the operative word there. So yeah, that's just another little technique, a uh, studio trick for guitar playing when you're recording. Always try to mute off the strings um, at a particular at a particular place where you don't need. You know, if you're if you're not playing anything low down here, then you can kind of mute off the strings at whatever point you're uh, you're playing in. Cool. All right, uh, I got one last gain stage that I think I'm going to show you, uh, and then we're going to finish up. All right, bye. Okay, back down on the floor to show you one last gain stage or gain type, and that is my fuzz pedal. Uh, this is my fuzz that I use. It is the Big Muff Op Amp by Electro Harmonics. Um, if you're familiar with the Smashing Pumpkins, this is supposedly the same or a similar style fuzz pedal that you would hear on a lot of Smashing Pumpkins records. Uh, the technical term for it is the woofy fuzz pedal rather than the scratchy fuzz pedal. That's how I describe it. It kind of goes woof, woof, woof instead of <laughs> Yeah, right? Everybody understands that. Um, and then also the last thing about it is that I put it first in the chain of pedals. Um, fuzz is a little bit different than other gain pedals like overdrive or distortion. Uh, I like to put it first for two reasons. The first reason is because I put it before the line six pedal that I have, which is a stereo pedal. This splits the signal and goes to my two amplifiers. So the fuzz pedal, I like to have going equally to both amplifiers, if that makes sense. So it is before the split. 
uh, rather than some of my other gain pedals that go after the split. One pedal goes to one amp, this pedal goes to another amp um, after the stereo split. So that's the first reason why it's first. The second reason why my fuzz pedal comes first uh, is just because it sounds better in front of all this modulation stuff. So chorus and flanging and phasing, rotary, stuff like that. Uh, even though I actually don't use it with fuzz, um, but I do find that it just overall the tone of the guitar, everything sounds better with the fuzz before any of those sort of modulation effects. Whereas regular overdrive and distortion, uh, to me, typically sound better after any of those modulation effects. Cool? So, there you go. Fuzz. Electroharmonics Big Muff. Uh, that's my flavor. What sort of fuzzes do you guys use? Curious to know. All right. Take it easy. So, this is... Uh, the end of guitar tracking. We are technically done, um, but I wanted to just have one little add-on thing here, and that's about what it means to play guitar. Um, as you may have noticed in this video, I don't actually have any clips of me playing um, while tracking the guitar tracks. So that's a conscious effort. One, because I wanted to focus on actually just playing guitar and not trying to get it on film. Um, but two, it's because it's kind of boring just watching guitar players play guitar, uh, play the same old licks that we all kind of know, and we know how to play guitar, right? It's, it's pretty simple. Um, but I, what I do want to focus on is something different, being different, trying to be creative. Uh, that's what I've got this here and what I'm actually going to play and we're going to hear some guitar tones, quote-unquote. Um, trying to be creative. A great way to do that is pedals. So beyond the everyday sort of guitar sound, right, playing chords and notes and stuff, uh, a technique or something that people should think about when doing guitar is ambience and creating atmospheric sounds and just creating sort of a pad or a mood using the guitar much like a synthesizer. After all, this is an electric guitar and it's just an electrical signal that goes through these electrical pedals and it's just a signal again, right? So you can manipulate that signal um, just like a synthesizer with synthetic pedals, if you will. Uh, one of my favorite pedals is delay. This right here is a source audio nemesis delay. Uh, if you're not familiar, check it out. It's a multifunctional delay pedal, so it does more than just repeat your note that you play. Um, one thing that I do like about it, it has this reverse delay function that takes what you play and plays it in reverse, and it kind of gives it a swell effect to it. Sounds something like this. Right? So you can use that, but you can go even further. Uh, what I've done here is recreate some happy accidents that I've learned over the years. So, one thing that I do, or that I've done here, is take this modulation pedal, my Line 6 modulation pedal, which is a stereo pedal. It can go left and right outputs, but I've actually looped that into itself. So I've taken one output and I've gone back into a second input and then coming out of the final output, it's, it's in mono, but it's using the stereo loop, if you will, within the pedal. Um, to kind of play back upon itself, it starts to oscillate and it doesn't give you notes, it just gives you noise, really. Uh, then the other happy accident that I found out, or that I actually learned from the great Dave Gilmore, uh, 
a lot of people may know this, is if you have a wah pedal, right here, I have a Dunlop wah pedal, you plug your guitar into the output, sorry, this side, and then you plug your output into the input, if that makes sense. So I've, I've got it wired incorrectly. If you mistakenly put the input and output on the wrong side, uh, it gives what is commonly referred to as the seagull effect. Um, and then you can actually use your tone knob on your guitar to make funny noises. Um, so I'll go ahead and demonstrate all of this kind of together and and then that'll be it. So again, we are done with guitar work. Uh, I've Over the last year and a half or two years, I've also been doing a little bit of synths added into some of my songs and some vocals as well. Um, but from here, we move on to real vocals. Uh, I'm going to try to get some friends of mine that sing much better than me uh, to help me out with these songs, kind of make it a community group effort, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, that we can get schedules aligned and I can have some folks help me out with this. Um, we're getting really close to the end. Um, I'm very excited. It's had its ups and downs, um, but we're almost there. So thanks for watching. Thanks for following along. Like and subscribe or don't. It's It really doesn't matter. I'm not one of those people that is trying to force people to like and subscribe to what I'm doing. If you enjoy it, I would appreciate it. That's all. Okay, so without further ado, let me give a demo of some funky guitar atmospheric effects. <laughs>